from the Regency Center in San Francisco. It's theCUBE, covering Serverless Conf, San Francisco 2018. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media. I'm Stu Miniman and you're watching theCUBE's coverage of Serverless Conf 2018 here in San Francisco. Happy to welcome you to the program. First time guest, Andrew Passwater, who's with Serverless and his growth. Thanks for joining me. Yeah, thanks. All right, so uh, you, you were for company serverless, we're at a conference about serverless. Right. Uh, help us explain a little bit about your background, your company, and what you work on. Yeah, well, I guess I'll start with the capital S, serverless, the only way I know to distinguish. Um, so serverless got its start when Austin Collins, he was an AWS community hero, um, he decided that he wanted to use this new Lambda thing to launch some of his own side projects, and so he built the serverless framework. Um, he did not expect for it to completely skyrocket. Um, I think we have like somewhere close to 30,000 GitHub stars. It's like 25, 28 um, at this point. And it really kind of like this whole serverless movement, lowercase s now, uh, started to build up around AWS Lambda and like all of the major cloud providers started launching their own serverless solutions, right? Um, and so I got involved with serverless.com. Um, because I guess I had been in the tech industry in San Francisco for a while. I think I have a pretty non-traditional background for someone who's at a developer tools company. Um, I've kind of done things all over the map and right now what I do primarily at Serverless is write a lot of their content. Um, you know, things that they tweet out, uh, things that are in their newsletter, on their blog, a lot of tech writing and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, you know, some techies, you know, they, 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 it's like, oh wait, that, that's like marketing stuff. Right. Oh, we can't do this. You, you gave a lightning talk here. Maybe give, give our audience a little bit of a flavor what, what you talked about there. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the biggest appeals to me about Serverless as a company was how passionate everyone there was about the fact that you didn't need to have an engineering background to be able to develop software. Um, and we have people in our company who have like film backgrounds, who have fashion backgrounds, and they're working at a tech company. Um, and so really what my talk was about is I deploy applications. And that's because technologies like serverless really lower the barrier to entry for people who are trying to get involved in this stuff. So I was able to deploy fully working applications without even having to code that much. Um, and I think that it's something really exciting that not a lot of people are talking about, right? Yeah, Andrew, so I'm, I'm a little older than you. When I went to school, it's yeah. like we called it programming. And that right. was like, you know, you wrote code, which meant, you know, you got some big book, you wrote like, you know, lines of code and you execute this. Now it's like, you know, well, coding, you take a bunch of stuff, you put it together, um, you know, it looks, you know, very different from, uh, you know, what, what I learned to program back in the yeah. day and therefore, you know, right, you don't need a CS major necessarily to be able to get some doing and right, serverless sounds like, you know, is it lowers that bar even more, right? Yeah, I mean, like, one of the things is, I do feel like AWS Lambda, for instance, that already makes it so much easier to be able to you know, code something and publicly host it. Um, you don't have to worry about setting up your own servers and all that stuff. It also makes it a lot cheaper to get started. So if you just have like this side project or a hackathon project, um, you know, super easy to kind of just deploy that to anyone. A cool thing that I feel like other developer tools like the serverless framework does is make it so that you don't even have to understand AWS. So you can leverage the power of not having to uh, administer your own servers and also not have to understand like cloud formation. You know, you can just kind of like a few lines of code and get it done. All right. Yeah, t t tell, tell us a little bit about your journey. You know, what, what have you, you build with, with the serverless stuff? How do you get involved in it? Uh, you know, what, what can you do with it? Yeah, I mean, uh, whenever you say how do you get involved, do you mean just me or just like any person out so, there? So start with the personal and okay. uh, yeah, what, what's your recommendation to others? Yeah, I mean, I would say there are so many tutorials available that actually start from the basics. And one thing that's already started happening is serverless is attracting all different kinds of people. Um, so I would say just start looking online for tutorials, like even I've written some, uh, that cover everything from how do you set up an AWS account in the first place, to how do you uh, put this on AWS, and that sort of thing. Um, also, I think a thing that's really important whenever you take on any sort of side project like this is why does it matter to you? And I think for me, that reason is I don't, have a lot of time, you know, life is short. And there are lots of things I do at work, just like everyone, that are so mundane and so routine and I do them over and over. And those are perfect candidates for automation. And so anytime you have something in your life like that that you feel like you'll be really motivated to never have to do again, I feel like it's a great reason to want to learn. 
All right, uh, Andrea, one of the other things you're involved with here uh, is uh, there's Women Who Serverless uh, yeah. event uh, that, that is happening uh, you know, later today. So uh, you know, we love supporting at uh, SiliconANGLE and theCUBE. A lot of these women events, uh, you know, especially here in the Bay Area, but all over the place. So give us a little bit of insight as to what's happening at, at the, this event. Yeah, so I feel like you know one thing that a lot of women in the tech industry can't help but notice is that it's pretty male dominated. And um, I think that it makes it really important then to try and create community um, and try to bring more women into the space, make it feel like it's a really safe and fun place to be for women. So uh, I've been throwing these women who serverless happy hours and uh, we're going to have one tonight after serverless comp. So I'd be really excited if anyone wanted to come. Also like keep uh, on Eventbrite, because we'll be throwing more of them, and I hope to see everyone there who can come. All right, uh, yeah, last thing, if people want to find out more about uh, Women Who Serverless, about, uh, I believe serverless.com is uh, the website for your company. Right, That's yeah. easy, as a matter of fact, you know, I, I think in the early days, I grabbed a, one of the stickers from your company just because I thought it was about serverless in general. So, uh, right. you know, pretty well fused together from a, from a branding standpoint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I would say that the, serverless.com and serverless movement distinction is sort of a blessing and a curse. On the one hand, it makes it a little bit hard to talk about one or the other. You can kind of get them mixed up. Um, on the other hand, it's been really nice for us to be able to see like all of the excitement that's kind of come out of serverless and being able to educate people. So, yeah. All right, Andrew, I really appreciate you joining us, uh, sharing your story as to yeah. Uh, how somebody you don't have to be, you know, hardcore, you know, d d developer uh, to be able to get involved in this space. Yeah, and if anyone makes an application who thought they couldn't code, I would love to hear about it. All right, yeah, and we also love to hear about them here on our program. So, of course, reach out to us. The, the cube.net's the website. I'm just at Stu on Twitter. Always appreciate the feedback. Love to hear these stories uh, about people using some phenomenal technology in cool new ways. So, uh, I'm Stu Miniman, and thanks so much for watching the cube.